Hey everybody, welcome on into ClayshareCon day two. Oh my gosh, this morning has been amazing. We've had so many great demos. If you had a chance to check those out, fantastic. If not, you can always catch the replays on ClayShare.com. You can download the ClayShare app and watch it anywhere, or you can go ahead and watch it on the main website, ClayShare.com. So now we have a really fun tutorial with FlexiBats, and we have two guest artists. We have Chelsea and Lauren that are going to be joining us for this tutorial. Um, Chelsea is a little under the weather right now, so she's going to be answering questions and, and talking um, about the FlexiBats a bit, and Lauren is going to be actually doing the hands-on demo. So here we go. We're going to send it over to Chelsea first, and she's going to tell you all about FlexiBats. Awesome. Hello, guys. Um, so I am the, the founder of FlexiBats. Um, Essentially, they are, if you haven't already seen us on Instagram or anything, they are a bat that goes in the wheel, um, but they're flexible um, and they're porous. And because of that, we've been able to incorporate stamps um, on the bottom of, um, on the top of our bats. So the bottoms of your pieces are able to have a foot ring and a stamp incorporated on them. Um, either while you're working on the wheel or while you're hand building on top of them. Um, and so it's kind of like a two for one or while you're throwing or while you're hand building, you're also building these fun designs and stuff on your bottom. Um, but they're just like a really fun new little tool that we've been working with. Um, so we have Lauren in the studio and she is going to go over some of the features of the flexi bats. Um, and then we have our famous peel reveals, um, which have been super fun on Instagram every once in a while. We'll take a new design and we'll peel it off the bat um, and you guys can see firsthand what they look like. So I will give it to Lauren now. All right. Hi everyone. My name is Lauren. Uh, first I'm going to show you some finished products of the Flexi Bats. Um, I have some very popular ones here. I have a beautiful mandala bat. I'm going to try and shine it so the high gloss the glaze can kind of shift a little bit. I have a beautiful mountain bat. I love that. I have a chevron. These are awesome. The chevron, the circle diamond, there's a lot of patterns that just pick up the texture so well every single time. This is a new hexagon bottom we're working on. And these are all cups made by Miss Chelsea herself. And she, other than being the founder of FlexBat, she's a very, very talented potter. So I'm going to do a couple peel reveals for you. So in front of me, I have a mountain bat, and then I have a new design that we've been working on for our own logo. Um, and obviously you can make custom designs. If you haven't seen Jessica talk about us already, or if you don't follow us on Instagram, we make um, custom designs for you and your logo or you and your special design that you want. So I'll do a little peel here. So like I said, this is the mountain. Get that little pop at the end and you're just getting something beautiful and crisp. I have a little texture at the top but that's easily, um, you can easily wipe that down with a fine sponge. And then this is our FlexiBat logo. And again you can see that we have some finer words in here and we're going to talk about how to really work the clay into those finer designs. So in the meantime, I'm gonna switch over to my other camera angle. And while she's doing that, if anybody has any questions, you know, please type them in. I will ask them, either Chelsea or Lauren will answer them depending on what the question is. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people say they love their custom flexi bats. So that is so good to hear. I, I love mine. I have my clay share logo and I also have the mandala and the mountain one that I haven't had a chance to use yet, but they're, they're on my list along with a couple others that are really gorgeous. So you'll be seeing those in my studio coming down the line. Yeah, we often have, oh, sorry. So this broadcast is um, the most technologically advanced one we've done so far. We are broadcasting from three locations with, I've got three cameras and a phone in my studio and Lauren has two cameras and Chelsea has two. So um, that's a lot <laughs> to make yeah. this happen. We're working with a lot of camera angles. So I wanna make sure we're not getting feedback though. 
Um, but you can see that I'm sitting here in front of my bat and I'm just gonna start throwing for you guys. The bats were originally designed to be thrown with, um, but as, you know, as potters do, sometimes we flip flop between the wheel and hand building, sculpture, whatever it may be. And we've been finding that a lot of hand builders have been enjoying it. But we're gonna start with the wheel today and then we're gonna to get to a hand building project later. So what you just saw me do was dust some cornstarch on the flexi bat. And the cornstarch helps to absorb any excess moisture on the bat. I have some clay that has been wedged. I'm gonna go give that a quick wedge at the table. I like to dust my bat with cornstarch a little bit before I start using it. So I have about three pounds of clay here at the table. I'm just gonna give it a quick wedge. Wedging is important to me while throwing, just gets my clay um, nicely incorporated. I want something very homogenous. And a little trick I like to do is uh, when I'm done wedging, I'll roll this ball of clay into something more tube-like, and then I can just cut down the middle. So I have three pounds in front of me. Um, usually for a mug, I do like one and a half pounds. So when I cut this in half, I usually just eyeball it. I know that I'll have about a pound and a half each. Beautiful. And you can see I did a terrible job of wedging, so I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> it's good to <laughs> check your work, though. It's just like math. you got to check your work. All right, we'll give this another try here. And rolling it out, give it a slice, and that looks much better. So what I like to do for my pieces, after I wedge them, I take the cut edge and I smack it against a, a dry, clean surface. So I'm just gonna do it on my table here. A little rocking motion back and forth, rotating my hand. And this gets me a nice, flat, smooth surface. Um, and you want a, something as smooth as possible for the bottom of your clay. And that way, when you press it into the flexi bat, you'll get a nice clean stamp. We have a, a question. If, can the, the flexi bats be ordered if somebody's in the UK? Can they be shipped outside of the US? Yes, they can be. Yes, there we, we go. Do, yes, you can. We've, we've sent them to, I'm sure Chelsea can name all the places, but I think we just sent some to New Zealand or Australia. Um, we've sent them pretty much everywhere. I don't know if we've hit Asia yet, but <laughs> we've hit a lot of <laughs> places in the world, which is great. Cool. That's so good to know because we, you know, clay shares worldwide and it's fabulous that, you know, people can get them anywhere. So, yay. Yeah, they're great. All right, so I'm gonna start throwing here and I just wanna talk about the importance of smacking down your clay and leaving it there. After you get a good smack, hopefully the clay is starting to fill in the dents of the stamp. So I just like to, again, with my flat side here, hover right above the stamp and really press it firm in there. And what I'm doing is I'm moving the hands, I'm moving my clay with my hands. I'm not, you know, moving the wheel manually. And I'm giving it a smack on all sides coming down towards the center. And then I can start throwing. And so this step is really important because um, unlike a regular piece of clay, if you don't get it in the center at the first time, um, you kind of have to get up and wedge it again because it has the design on it similar the way if you were hand building once you have the stamp on it you have to start over with a new slab so that's why Lauren was so um, picky on the way that she really enforced it on the wheel. So unlike um, throwing on a normal bat or just on your wheel head the flexi bats are obviously very soft. 
Um, so the goal is to never apply so much aggressive pressure that the bat slips off of the wheel. So you can see as I'm spinning here, I'm never pushing aggressively forward with my left and going down with my right. I'm keeping my hands kind of cupped over the clay. I like to pinch my pinkies in just a little bit to scoop that clay up, but my thumbs are sticking over and they're staying over this clay here. And I'm just applying a downward pressure with my palms. And of course my thumbs are going to kind of tame that height there. So with um, anything that I throw, I always comb and you can comb with the bats. Um, there, I, there's a special way that I do it so that you don't get a little squirrel or um, sometimes when we're lifting up that clay so aggressively into the cone, you get like a little squirrel at the bottom and you didn't compress when you were down at the bottom when you drill. Um, so, you know, things happen, but to encourage our clay not to squirrel at the very center at the bottom, I'm going to cut my hands over the clay like so. And then you'll see as I squeeze, I'm actually going to open up my thumbs and my pinky, my ring, I'm going to do like a chain reaction and my fingers are going to start pushing inwards. Kind of pushing at the bottom, kind of squeezing, allowing that clay to come up into my palms. So again, instead of um, really aggressively coning or just allowing the clay to be worked up into the hands, if you take anything away from throwing on a flexi bat, it's to not be aggressive. Um, sometimes it's hard to rethink your way of throwing, but if you take your time and practice with it, it's going to come. Uh, I've been throwing with the bats for over a year now, and I don't know, I've had a great experience. The first few times they were tricky because you know that's it's like with any tool, any pottery tool that I bought, um, but it takes some time and just sit and learn with it, it'll come. And I'm just gonna comb down. I actually haven't even tried throwing with them yet. I've only hand built and I, I am planning to throw. So this is good for me too, because I, um, you know, I'm slightly aggressive when I throw. So I, I might have to, maybe I'll use porcelain because when I throw with porcelain, I'm a little less aggressive. Um, yeah. So that might be <laughs> a little, little lesson for me there. Right. We use, um, we use uh, Laguna Phoenix. It's the best oh, clay. It's so crisp. Like I've, uh, we've also used the porcelain from Laguna and um, it's kind of, you know, it's a 50, 50, maybe if we work with it a little bit longer in practice, we'll get it. But the B-Mix, it's just so smooth and you know, you, it's our studio clay. So we can use it for hand building and all that jazz too, but it's a great throwing clay as well. B-Mix is my go-to as well. I, I love it. I, I transitioned from porcelain to B-Mix because you know, porcelain can be a little, little fussy. So good to yeah. know. Most of our um, Kalisha members that can use B mix, I think most of them do. So that's right. nice. All right. So I'm going to find my center and start drilling down here. So the way I find my center is I take my middle finger. If I'm looking at a clock, I'm coming in about nine from four o'clock. I'm coming in at an angle, and I'm just going to press down my middle finger. And I create a little dimple. That's how I find my center. And then I'm going to get some extra water in here. I'm going to rotate my middle finger. And then I'm going to start drilling down. I have a little feed of water in there. That way, if I hit uncentered clay, my fingers don't catch on it. And of course, I want to measure how thick my bottom is. And I do that with a pin tool. I usually go for about a quarter inch thick. So I'm gonna press the center with my pinch tool. I just wanna press until I'm touching the foam. There's gonna be some resistance from the foam. Obviously it's soft. So I don't want to, um, I don't wanna poke through the bat. So I'm just gonna press until I hit the bat and then I'm going to slide my finger down and take it out. So that's about a quarter inch, I'm happy with that. I'll leave it there. So to pull out the wall, um, since we're moving such a, uh, a large mass of clay, I'm going to take my left hand on the outside wall and I'm going to take my middle and ring finger and put them on the inside of the wall here. 
And I'm just gonna pull across my wall as I usually would. But this left hand is going to offer support to the outside wall. Um, this does three things. It keeps my clay centered as I'm dragging my uh, right hand out. I'm applying a little bit of downward pressure on the bat so the bat doesn't peel up. And then uh, it's also going to act as a little bit of a support for my right hand as I pull. If you ever are pushing or pulling in one single direction, in one direction only, um, that could be the uh, that could be the thing that makes the bat come off the wheel. So I'm just trying to fight against that and have two directions we're going in. So we're kind of coming in from the side here, not also pulling. And while I'm down here, I'm also compressing my bottom, so I'm coming back and forth from the edge to the center. And this is just to ensure that all that clay has worked down into that texture of the bath. So one thing that's really nice that you guys can probably hear while you're listening to Lauren throw um, is there's no wiggly and wobbly noises going on. Um, she actually makes this joke. She calls them, uh, what is it? The Shimpo whisper? No, the Shimpo <laughs> wheel. So yeah. she makes this yep. joke and she calls it the whisper bat. Um, <laughs> there's no, um, there's no wiggle um, thud noises when you're using them. They're actually really nice and quiet. Um, so sometimes when I throw, I get that sound is kind of nerve wracking to me. So I've actually really enjoyed throwing on um, these bats just because of the quietness from the wheel or from the, the bat um, hitting the bat pin. So that's a really nice feature. Um, when you're working and centering and widening your piece and stuff like Lauren is. Absolutely. That's good to know. Thank you. So you may have just saw me um, pull out my calipers and my ruler here. So the diameter of the bats are about three and a quarter. So I measure three and a quarter on my calipers. And then I can use these as I'm throwing to see how far off I am from the foot. Obviously, the, we have a built-in foot to the bat. And uh, we don't want to, I don't like a lot of overhang. The, kind of the whole point is that you don't have to trim your bottom. <laughs> so I would like to hit as close as I can to that outer edge. So every so often you'll see me, I kind of squeeze or collar my play in. And I just want to do that before I start pulling up the wall. You can also do this while you are centering uh, your bat or centering your clay. And we're pretty close on the mark here. So I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'll cut off my excess later. I'm just gonna get a little fresh water on here. So they, they have a few questions about the bats. Um, one, one of our questions is their wheel does not have any um, bat pins on it. So these won't fit on it. Um, what would she have to do to get them to stick? So um, I've, I've had a few people reach out to me. Um, I'm trying to come up with something that's not um, a makeshift solution for that because the problem is not getting it stuck to the bat. The problem is that you're never going to get this circle perfectly in the center of the wheel. So even if you can get it secured to um, the wheel head, your your foot is going to be off or like off orientation from where you start your cup, um, but I am trying to figure out whether we like uh, 3D print some kind of clip or something else to kind of solve that problem because I've had a few people ask me that question so it's it's definitely in the back of my head. Um, okay. But yeah, nothing for now. I'm sorry. <laughs> and similar to that, um, will the bats accommodate different bat pin sizes? Eventually, yeah. So right now they're your standard 10 inch bat pin. Um, I just made one for um, a test friend customer who had, um, is it, I think it's a, shim is it, um, it's an eight inch wheel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I've gotten good feedback on it. So that's also that it's in the works. Um, it's just production on multiple things right now, but yeah, those will be out eventually. Thank you. Lauren, so, that's a lovely cup. Oh, thank you. I don't you. even know where it came from. <laughs> thank you. Um, 
So I'm just finishing up. I did about four pulls and I'm thinking that's a good place to stop. I'm just going to wipe up the excess water on the inside here because I want my bottom to dry out nice and evenly. Um, one of the extra steps that I do to make sure I get a nice crisp design at the bottom is obviously it's stemming from compressing. So I use a throwing stick, a wooden throwing stick. Um, and I just wet the bottom a little bit and then I'm going to use this bottom part and I just kind of go back and forth as I am compressing the bottom. And obviously you could flip it around. So this part would be up against your wall and you would get a perfect 90 degree between your bottom and your wall. That's how a lot of people use the throwing stick. That's definitely an option. Definitely not like a necessary product uh, to you know, use the bats, but it is certainly helpful, especially when I finish throwing and I realize I don't think I compress that well. So it's a good little, it's a nice tall tool that you can get down in there. So one of my final steps, I'm going to take off this excess slip with a rubber rib tool. And this is um, a red rubber rib tool from Mud Tools. It's one of the softer ones. And I just like to scrape off all the excess slip here. This is going to help the pot dry evenly. Um, sometimes I've witnessed when I come in, you know, after a night of throwing, I come in the next morning and I'm ready to pull um, and peel my pieces off the bat. Sometimes the lip is drier than the base. The base can sometimes hold on to extra moisture. So I just want everything to dry really evenly. I'll wrap these well under plastic. That way when you pull off your piece, it is a consistent uh, moisture all throughout the piece. You can still, you still have time to add handles and carve or whatever you'd like to do, add your stamps and other things. So one of my last steps here is to take the calipers and see how I'm doing at the bottom. Make sure I'm at a good diameter. So, and I made a little mark with my calipers here. I know some of you are screaming at home, like, why is your wheel on? But that's just how I do it. I have yet to have a problem with it. hasn't sliced the piece off yet. Um, but it actually makes a little mark for me. So I know right where to uh, put my wooden knife. So I use a, just a regular wooden knife here. And I stick the blade up against the side of the piece. Usually I'm holding it from three o'clock, but I'll hold it from this angle so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. As I'm cutting, the blade is sitting up against the piece so the clay can be redirected to the outside of the knife. That way it doesn't get stuck up against the pot after you cut it. We have a question. Um, would these work with the strong arm attachment that um, some folks use for throwing? Sorry, what was your question? So we, we have a question, would the flexi bats work with the strong arm? It's an attachment that you can get to help with centering. So I don't know the answer to that, but if that person wants to email me, um, I would be more than happy to okay. send them one so we can troubleshoot together because I would love to know the answer. All right, I will let her know. It's kind of the fun part about having a new product. You get to, uh, you get to troubleshoot with all your customers, but at the same time, you, you see all the, uh, the lovely things people are making with them. It's, it's very fun. So I have my sponge here. I'm just gonna clean off my bath. So what's nice about the bats is they kind of just peel off and you can slide them right off. Um, I'll always know which way the stamp is facing because of my orientation stamp in the corner here. For taller work, I take um, an MDF board, just a wear board and I get a little bit of moisture on here. And then I can just simply slide my piece onto the board and then I can transport it and I have a solid steady bottom working for me. All right, so I'm gonna make another piece on the wheel here. And this one, we have our FlexiBat logo. Lauren, can you show a close up of that one when you, um, after you put the cornstarch on it so we can see all the detail, please? Absolutely. Thanks. 
So I chose this one specifically for a few reasons because it's a custom bat. Um, so if you guys, I, as an art person, there's things called negative and positive spaces. Um, so the word Pottery Mill Clay Studio, when you guys send us your custom designs, um, they're gonna be black and white. There'll be no grayscale at all. Um, so what is engraved will be what's black. Um, and so on the flexi bat where you see the cup, the word flexi bat was white and that's why it's not engraved. Um, Pottery Mill Clay Studio was black um, and that's why that was engraved. The cup and the bat are what was also black and that's why those are engraved. Um, and the rest of the area was left alone. So I chose this one to show you guys because there's two different fonts in there. The flexi bat font is a negative space. Um, it is not engraved. The Pottery Mill Clay Studio is a positive space um, and it is engraved um, and they work differently. Um, so one will be indented and then one will have um, the uh, impression, I guess the opposite of um, the clay on the wheel. So um, I know Lauren did a peel reveal earlier. She can show you again if we need to. Um, but because the writing is smaller for the one that is engraved where it says Pottery Mill Clay Studio, we've come up with like this little hack to help you guys with the smaller fonts. Um, Cause everyone, we um, larger, thicker, bolder um, fonts work wonderful. Like just like Jessica's is literally the perfect logo <laughs> for our bat as silly as that sounds. Um, but that being said, not everybody has such a clear, solid image. So we've come up with this workaround that Lauren is gonna talk about right now. Um, and this has been helping a lot with smaller detailed fonts. So I'll let Lauren kind of tell you what she's doing right now. Right. So what I'm doing is I just took a small dime size piece of clay and I'm just pressing it onto uh, where it says Pottery Mill Clay Studio. It's that smaller font Chelsea was talking about. So I'm pressing that really firmly. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm just going to start rubbing the clay. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a little bit of a slip and I'm just looking for the clay to be sticky. And that'll be the perfect surface to take my next ball of clay and smack it down for the next cup. Sometimes what I do to get a flat bottom is hit the side or hit the corner of the bat where there's no design. Again, we're going to give it a nice press. And like Chelsea said, that little extra step, it should help get you a crisper design when your design or logo your words, whatever it may be, uh, when it's a tighter line. And so we okay. have a question, what font size is ideal for these? Um, I think anything over, so it's not necessarily the font size because we're gonna stretch your image to fit inside of our bat. So our bats are about three, you probably have a three inch um, diameter of a circle to work with. So if you're super um, curious, because um, we can, we always work with the people who send us their custom designs. I personally think something that is at least like three fourths of an inch large, um, I feel like I can always say will work really well. If it's under three fourths of an inch, um, I think that there's a little bit of struggle. Um, and the reason for that, and it's mostly with font, it's because the whole shape is so small. So. For example, if you sent me a flower and it has these little uh, tips at the end because they get they get pointy as they go, the clay fills in really small details like that very, very well on the bat. It's when you have um, font that the whole thing is more thinner and sharp all around these different angles that it has a hard time. Um, but this tip that we just shared, that Lauren just shared, um, has we actually haven't thrown a pot that has been unsuccessful yet. Um, with small font because of this little tidbit. Um, we've also been working, we've had people do the same thing that we, um, Lauren just showed you, um, but they've been using colored clay and it's so fun. Um, 
so you smush the colored clay into your bat the same way that Lauren did. Um, and then instead of adding water, you want to add slip that is the same color as the clay that you're going to be throwing with. Um, and then you wait for it to dry a little bit until it's like not slippery. You want it to be like a sticky consistency. Um, and then when you throw your like your clay of B mix or whatever on top, um, when you peel it off later, so in the same spots where you'd get your texture, you have a completely different colored clay. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So Lauren's just going through one more um, version of what we kind of just did the last time because we wanted to make sure that we gave you guys um, some good tips and tricks, especially with a smaller font um, and talk about the customs bats and stuff like that. Um, and make sure that you guys understand about the compression and how to pull your walls and stuff like that. Yeah, and all that information for submitting a custom design, it's all on our website if you wanna go look. It's the uh, potterdnellstudio.com. I'm sure it'll be linked in different areas. So I've just finished centering here. I'm grabbing my calipers to see if I'm at a good diameter. And I'm pretty dead on, so I'll just leave it there. I'm gonna find my center and start drilling down. Chelsea, I know I've heard this story a thousand times, but when, do you want to tell them about why you created the bats? Uh, sure. So I was, um, I went to Mass Lowell. Um, and so for four years, I got to do ceramics and it was amazing. Um, and then I graduated and like a big girl, um, I got a full-time job. I somehow decided to open up a pottery studio. And at the same time, I decided I was going to go to grad school. And um, during all of this time, I realized that I had one day a week to throw. Um, and I was watching like all of these amazing potters on Instagram. Um, and I was kind of comparing myself to the amount of time that they got to spend on their, their art, right? Um, and I was comparing my own art um, in the level of intricacy that I wanted to produce while I was making my pieces. Um, and I was a little like bummed out. Uh, one, because I could only get into the studio. So if I made work and I didn't get in there fast enough, I wasn't able to trim and I wasted that whole day and I was super bummed out. Um, and then <clears throat> the other reason is with only a day, I wasn't able to be as detail oriented as I wanted to be. Um, I love the bottoms of cups. I literally think they're just, they're literally a, a blank landscape that you can just kind of do whatever you want with. Um, I think they tell a completely different story than like the sides of your pieces. They're a really nice surprise um, to hit. And I was really disappointed that I was doing the typical, like cut the bottom of your piece and just give a quick corner of a wood tool. Um, so I was at a makerspace in Lowell, um, Lowell makes um, and I had access to a bunch of people who knew amazing things. Um, and I worked with people in the wood shop. Um, they had a plastics area. I worked with people in cosplay um, and I was introduced to all of these amazing different materials. And I just, um, first I tried it on a wooden bat, then I tried it on a, a, a plastic bat. Um, and then I um, found some EVA material and I used some EVA material and I, made myself a bat out of that um, and I haven't looked back. And first I started with just some designs on the bottom and that was wonderful. Um, and the problem with the designs is I was getting, um, how do I explain it? I was a little disappointed about the way the design met the edge of the pot. It was too uh, strong. So then I decided to do a second depth um, and that's where I added the foot ring. Um, and then since then, I've just been incorporating different designs and stuff into the bottoms of my pieces. Um, 
And what's really nice about this too is we sit on the computer for such a long time of the day. Um, and I think it's just really cool that I've been able to incorporate um, graphic design and other design and stuff into my work um, where I wouldn't normally be able to be in the studio because I was studying or I was in work or I was traveling or something, but I have my computer. Um, so it was really cool to almost be finishing my pieces in a completely different place. Um, so that was, that was really interesting. Um, and since then I've just, we've had other people in our studio use them and stuff and they've just, they've been wonderful. So I have a, a couple of questions. Um, one is, are you limited to the size bottom piece that you can make? Is it only gonna be able to be a three and a half inch bottom or can people throw larger pieces? So you can definitely throw larger pieces um, if you want to, um, you would then just trim a little bit extra. So that way your foot ends up being three inches. So you would just kind of create like a curve or something. Like if you wanted to make a really nice solid wide vase, you would make it on it, flip it over and you would just trim it down to the foot size. We will eventually be coming out with like additional feet, um, foot sizes and stuff like that as well, but. Okay, and then the other question someone wants to know, are, would you ever consider making a pineapple design? Absolutely. Um, that's like, I, no, I literally on your list. <laughs> I, think we, I feel like I've seen one in the list. Yeah, no, we it's have it. a, we have a list and so, the pineapples are on it. Um, next month, I guess I'll reveal it to you guys now. Um, next month I have a cactus bat coming out. Um, so that one I'm really excited about. We just, um, this month we just released, um, I'm drawing a blank. Lauren, what did we release this month? The Monstera leaf, right? Oh, yeah. So we did some Monstera prints um, the month before we've been doing Damask. Um, so if you guys have any crazy wild ideas, feel free to send them to me because I'm always, I'm always looking for a list. Yeah, we just had someone say they want a desert scene. So uh, yeah, I bet people have a lot of things they'd like to see. Um, now, I, I just want to quickly ask, I know we were going to do hand building with them and we've done wheel throwing. Are we going to have time to do hand building today? It's okay if we don't. I just I got some questions. I just wanted to answer. Absolutely. The, the so Lauren is going to do two more peel reveals right now so we can see the bottom of a few more pieces. And then um, I think we're left with about 20 more minutes. So we'll be doing hand building for the rest of that time. Yay. So it's both. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do those right now. Uh, this one is a sand dollar. One of my personal favorites. You can see that nice crisp design at the bottom. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, I would love to see like teal glazes on here, a little tropical what? palm leaves on the side, a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then this one is our cheetah bat. Sometimes I don't have the best of luck with this one. So I know I just need to compress a little bit more. But no, that looks pretty wonderful. Good. That looks pretty good. That looks great. Yeah. Yeah, the first two times I tried cheetah it gave me a little bit of trouble. But if I remind myself to compress an extra five seconds, usually it turns out pretty great. So cool. All right. I'll so lots of, lots of people are chiming in with designs they want to see. So I suggest Ooh. you email um, info at potterymill.com. Yeah. And, you know, email Chelsea and say, I'd love to see and just give her your design suggestions so that she can make it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to make a little platter. And I have my GR form right here. I have a square one. This is an eight by eight. And I'm just gonna quickly roll out a slab. And at the same time, I'm going to press, I'm gonna use the flexi bat through the slab roller on top of the clay. Um, and what's this, what this is going to do is it'll obviously incorporate all the design and it'll give you a foot ring so you don't have to add one later to your designs. So I just put this right um, underneath the clay, the clay on top, and then we're gonna roll it through. So these bats are about a quarter inch thick. And I've rolled out my slab of light to a quarter inch thick. So my slab roller. Lauren, sorry, okay. before um, you cover your bat in clay, can we show them what we did um, to cover the grommets? 
Oh, sure. It's very fancy, not janky at all. It's a little blue tape. <laughs> but that way, uh, the holes in the bat, uh, the clay doesn't go through those and it's easier to smooth it out. You could probably do the same for this corner design if you wanted to, and I'll do that right now. And let me just quickly ask, do you have an email list for people to get on so they can find out when new patterns are released? Yeah, so if you go um, on our website um, under shop, you'll see a spot that says flexi bats. You'll see all our current bats and then you'll see a contact list. So if you fill that out with um, a question or you just say like add me to your, your list, we'll be able to put you guys on. All right. So I'm just doing some quick compressing here and I'm trying to get rid of this canvas texture from the roller. Um, and like I said, the bat's going to go underneath the clay. I'm just going to flip it over here. And these bats are eight by eight in the form I have is an eight by eight, so it'll fit perfectly. Um, until we create a larger bat, this is the biggest size you can work with for the GR forms. And I'm going to set my slab roller to a half inch thick. And that half inch is accounting for the quarter inch slab of clay and the quarter inch uh, back. Right, We've good. had a few people um, ask if you'd ever consider making stamps that match the um, bottoms for people to use. Yes, um, so that we have a whole list of things that hopefully we'll have rolling in the next like six months or so. Yes. Um, but we have them working on, I guess you call them like a textured plate. So even Lauren, what she could have done with this so-called texture plate is the whole uh, plate will be filled with texture and she'd be able to almost sandwich her clay in between and she could match the bottoms of her feet um, or she could roll an entire slab that has the same design incorporated on it. Fantastic. I'm oddly picturing pineapples right now. I know pineapples is a thing. <laughs> I think it's this warm New England weather we're experiencing in Mass this week. We're just mm -hmm. so excited for summer. <laughs> we do not have that here. We've had so much snow and just not stopping. But you know, we yeah we we went through that too in Mass. We had, I think we had over what maybe a foot and a half in the last month. It was kind of crazy. Um, and so folks are asking, what slab roller are you using right there? I think it's the, is it the Shimpo one? I'm not sure. It's um, something star, maybe. It's um, a portable one that you can use in a classroom. I think it's 18 inches wide. Yeah, it's quite nice, actually. Yeah. Um, the handle comes off and stuff. I've, I've uh, put it in my car and I've brought it. I'm a middle school teacher as well. So I've brought it to class and stuff. And it's a, it's a pretty hefty baby. She's, she's pretty heavy, um, super durable. But I also, I'm not worried about um, trans, like transferring her and stuff in the car um, and letting certain students carry her. Um, <laughs> you, her. <laughs> You guys, you don't, you don't name your, your pottery tools? Oh yeah, some things get named. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, because we name our kilns. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think most people name their kilns. Okay, good. I affectionately call her, <laughs> I affectionately call her Bertha. Because she's just- Bertha. She's, she's wonderful. If anyone's name is Bertha, please let us know. Um, I love that name. It's just like the perfect name for that kiln. She gets it done. You know, <laughs> all right. I love that. I love that. So we're taking out all this excess clay here. I'm sure. This slab so is... when you take the bat off the, you know, when you take the bat off the bottom, you don't really have to do anything to the foot at all. Right. This it's is what like you have to smooth it out or anything. It's all good to go. Right. I have a a simple foot at the bottom and I don't have to touch it anymore. We have a bat that's called just a foot. Um, so if you're just looking for a 
just a foot. You can definitely <laughs> use that kind. Um, and I mean, you know, the designs at the bottom are really fun, but if you're not looking for that, we have a plain option for you. So I'm just gonna center this over my form here. I don't know if Lauren will bring this up, but um, she, sometimes she does these really amazing things and I don't even think she realizes that she does them. Um, putting the uh, form on a cup is genius. Um, the amount of times I've tried to work on a table and then my clay gets smeared underneath or I don't have access to it in the right way, um, but a banding wheel is too wide for what you're working with. Um, I just, I saw you do that thing on the cup and I just feel like that was a really little secret genius moment I wanted to share. Oh yeah, I do it in classes and people are like, oh, that's really smart. I'm like, yeah, it's just, just I to thought cough. people did it. <laughs> I thought people did this already. So well, we a, a brayer right now and using them just to kind of compress her edges along the GR form. Um, brayers are typically used for printmaking, uh, but they are amazing in the pottery world. My perfect, my uh, favorite kind, um, I think they're made by Speedball. Yes. Um, and are they, the- It's like, like a dense like, rubber. Like, yeah. It's lovely. And um, it, if your clay is like fresh out of the bag, so it's not, obviously it's not sticky. It's perfect for hand building. It's lovely. It's like a dense, dense rubber. So we have a, a question about the design. Is the foot ring deeper than the center image or are they the same depth? So when you have something in the center versus the right. ring. So the foot ring um, in the bat would be deeper, um, which means that the foot would be taller than the actual design. So we did this with the intention that depending on how you guys can stilt your stuff in the kiln, um, you can glaze all your bottoms. So you'll notice all the pieces that I did. Um, I was able to glaze my bottom. Um, I use glazes that I, I, I work with my own clear um, and I like to incorporate pigments into them. Um, but as long as your glaze is a nice solid non runny glaze, like not a floating blue or anything, um, you should be able to glaze your pieces. We've also, um, I've used um, small things of wadding um, and you glue them to the feet um, and that will stilt your feet up a little bit higher than your kiln shelf. And then you can definitely glaze your bottoms. Um, wadding, I think is just um, half alumina hydrate and half EPK. I think that's the recipe that we use. Um, go very light on the water that you add to it until you get to a, a clay consistency. Um, but alumina hydrate, if you guys don't know, um, helps so it's refractory, I guess, from glass and from ceramic. So it prevents your stuff from sticking. Um, I actually, this is a little bit off topic, but it's a tip that I wish I knew 10 years ago. Um, I take alumina hydrate and I put it in wax and I actually use that on my feet instead. Um, and what that does is it prevents it from sticking to the kiln shelf at all from the, if the clay gets a little sticky while it's in there. Um, and it prevents plucking. So any little chips and stuff that you might get on your pieces, it helps a lot with plucking. Um, and so it's really nice when I work with this stuff, especially with porcelain, if I get a little bit of glaze or something stuck where my foot is, um, the alumina hydrate really helps a lot. Yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you. So what I'm doing right now is I'm rolling out another small slab. And I'm actually going to make a handle for you guys. And we're going to show you a little special way to use the corner stamp. Oh, look at that. I love when you cut a piece of clay that's just like perfect for the size you need. So I have this foam resting over my piece of clay here. Oh, hello. I'm going to compress this real quick. I just want to get rid of all this canvas texture. And I'm using one of these, I think it's, I don't, I never know how to pronounce them. It's either Xiam or Xiam. I say Xiam. <laughs> I might be wrong, but it's the, it's X-I-E-M. Um, and I'm using a really long orange rib. It's relatively soft, but it's really thick. So it's nice to hold. 
Um, and I use this for compressing all my slabs. Something this wide is a lifesaver when you're working with a slab like this thing, it's lovely. So I have a little handle template here that we'll be including um, for everyone watching today if you're interested in trying it out. I measured it earlier. I think it's about six and a half inches long. So you can definitely make it longer if you need to. And what I'm going to do is I just kind of outline. I'm not gonna cut all the way through. I just wanna outline what the handle will look like. And then I'm going to take that mountain bat that we peeled earlier and I'm going to add a handle to that mug. So let me get my mountain bat here, lovely. And I'm sure all of you have been thinking, what do I do with this corner stamp? So Chelsea created it as an orientation stamp in the corner. That way, if you have thrown a, a mug, whatever it may be on the center of your piece, um, you'll always know which way the design is facing, which way your words are. So the mountains are facing up this way and this way as well. So it's an orientation stamp, but um, it is also great for hand building. You can add little pieces, uh, little decorations around your piece. So what is, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut really close to my final design. And then I like to center this bottom area. It's just big enough to fit this bat. So I'm just going to fit it over like so, kind of line up the bottom a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because this isn't our final shape but I just wanna get it in the general vicinity. And then I take a pony roller and just roll it back and forth. And I do it from all directions. I try to do it from the center outwards and then I go back and forth, go this way. And then instant gratification, you can pull it right up and you get that beautiful stamp at the bottom. So this will be the bottom of our handle. So I already, I Martha Stewart this. I already made a handle. <laughs> it's a tiny little guy, um, but he will sit on our mug like this. And you can see that there is the mountain design at the bottom. I'm just going to clean up the sides a little bit when I attach it to my cup. Jessica, you must have to do that a lot. Um, do your workshops like cooking shows? Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. Lots of stages. Everything all around the studio when I'm working. And um, yeah, because if not, you, you make a piece and then you wait four days and then you do the next day, you know. <laughs> it took me six weeks to film one class. No, you <laughs> <laughs> just takes forever. I know, but um, it's also really fun to have all the little bits ready to go. Like, yeah. When you're doing a demo. And obviously clay is temperamental because it's constantly just going to dry out on you. So you got to get a work at against the clock. It's true. So I need everything in ceramics. Oh, that, it's, that is so true. So I'll pull over this guy as an example. Let's say this piece, I didn't want to pull it off the bat yet. And I wanted to leave it here. I could use this orientation stamp in the corner and apply my uh, handle this way. This is our I don't know if you can see that. It's our rainbow design. It's got a little bit of clay in there. Um, so this way would be facing up. So if you are a, if you're making a righty mug, a righty mug, you can put the handle here. So then when you flip it up, you'll get the correct orientation. Or if you're making a lefty mug, just do it on the other side. Um, but since I've already pulled off my mountain and I have a handle for my mountain, I'm just gonna do it like so. And I'm a righty, but I am uh, not against making lefty mugs. My older sister is a lefty, so I gotta include her too. I'm gonna make I this want a lefty mug. Okay, I'll flip it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for Chelsea. And I'm just gonna do what we do when we apply handles. I'm gonna score and apply some slip. And sometimes if I don't have slip sitting next to me, I'll use like magic water or I'll take a really rough paintbrush with a little bit of water and I'll just make some slip right on the surface of my piece, which is what I'm going to do right now. I have a little bit of water next to me. 
Lauren, can you talk about the consistency? I know that you just peeled these off like 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, what is the, and I know that you can put the handle on while you're working on the bat. Um, what's the best consistency to take them off of the bat? Cause it looks like your pots are pretty dry. Yes, so I would say um, it's like right past the leather hard when um, you can't really add things anymore to it. Like this one is still semi-soft, so I think I'm in the safety zone um, as I'm adding my handle here. I know this guy is going to stick and be okay, but uh, kind of the general markers that I go through um, are if I can press it, and it has just a you can see it just has a like a little bit of give, uh, especially towards the bottom where it's a little bit softer. Um, but I can press a fingernail into it and it'll make a dent, but there's no clear fingerprints as I press it. So it's not sticky and wet clay. I think that is um, one of the hardest parts about using the bats is just knowing when your clay is ready to be pulled off. Um, I would say, um, you know, it's, it's gonna be a little further past leather hard. So you, what I used to do when I was working with these every single day, um, when we were making some mugs for a client, we, um, I would come in at night and throw a bunch of mugs. And then in the morning I would attach my handles about an hour or two later, I left them on my desk just to air dry and I was able to peel them off and they were perfect. Um, so that is my suggestion. Again, it, I think it depends on the clay too. Awesome. But, so we have about um, two minutes left. Um, I wanted to make sure that we got to talk about the time that it takes to take them off. Um, would you mind showing us the bottom of your of your cup? Absolutely. Your matchy matchiness. So this is, can you see that? The mountain. And then we have the bottom too. So like I said, this would be this would be a lefty. So you would hold it in your hand like this and flip it up and you would see the mountain. Lovely. All right. Um, so, yeah, I, I, just, oh, sorry. I have this GR. I just format. have a couple of questions. I just wanted sure. to quickly ask. Uh, someone wants to know how you clean and store them. The flexi um, So cleaning, um, you want it. I, if they get super dirty, I'll let them sit in um, water for a while and then the stuff will kind of wipe off easily. Um, I personally, if you're taking them off at the right time, meaning your clay is like a nice solid kind of hard leather hard, you shouldn't have to, and you cleaned them while they were like kind of on the wheel. You guys saw how Lauren cleaned hers up um, while she was still working. You shouldn't really have to clean them. Um, and I say that because the dry clay is actually gonna sit in some recessed spots and it in a way builds um, like a clay patina almost. Um, and having some clay residue inside your area is actually really nice. Um, it's almost like they work better after time. That's why the corn, it's the same thing as the cornstarch. Right. Yeah, the cornstarch I find myself using when the bat is brand new. And then over time, I don't have to use it as much. Or I only use it if it's freshly cleaned. So it might have moisture in it. We got about 30 seconds left. So is there anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? I'm gonna do two more peels here. Chelsea, you okay. can take a up. Okay, yeah, so these are always the best part. So I'll let Lauren do these peels and I think that's better. Oh, so this is the circle diamond one. My, a personal favorite. Watch, it's not gonna work. <laughs> oh, pretty good. Could do it some more. Great though. I love. All right. And I then have this, that one, so yay. <laughs> this is our rainbow. I always give it a rub for good luck. Oh, and you can hear that little pop. And that one is That's nice. Funny. Lovely. And I, you can Fantastic. see that I hit right the corner here so I don't have to trim anything later. Fantastic. All right. So I think we're gonna have to wrap it up for today, but I think we're gonna have to have you come back and do more with us in the future. We would love that. Thank we you. would love to, love to. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Great. We'll talk about that. So uh, I think Kim's good. Everyone, a huge thank you to Chelsea and Lauren for this fabulous demo. Not only a hand building demo with the Flexi Bats, but also a wheel throwing demo too. Thank you. Um, you can get your Flexi Bats from PotteryMill.com. And we do have 10% off right now through the 
through the ClayShare Con conference, and that is ClayShare 10. They can use that and save 10% off on your Flexi bats. So um, I'm going to be signing off now. We'll be coming back in about 15 minutes, and I'll be doing a making hand-built tray tutorial with Sandbow under glaze transfers. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, everyone watching. I'll see you all later.